Hello and welcome to another episode of Script to Screen. I'm your host, Mark Bauer. This is a talk show where I interview local writers and filmmakers of the Iowa City area. Today my guest is Riley Hayes. Hi, Riley. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Right. It's been a while since I've done this, so it's nice to get back into the swing of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so you attend the University of Iowa. What is your major? Uh, so I'm a junior and I am a cinema major and then I also study international studies with a global, with an in track. My track is global resources and the environment. And then I have a theater minor as well. So you, it sounds like uh, with the theater minor, you might be interested in performance. Did you uh, act in any plays or musicals in high school? Yeah, I did a lot of plays and musicals in high school. Um, I was a, I was in Guys and Dolls and uh, Alice in Wonderland, I played the Dormouse, which was really easy, just fall asleep all the time. <laughs> that was pretty nice. Yeah. Did you, uh, when would you say you got interested in theater? Um, they were putting on Once Upon a Mattress at my high school, which I'd seen the movie before with like Zoe Deschanel and I really liked it. So I wanted to, I started then and then I got a bit more into speech contest as well my junior year. Uh, which speech were you involved in? I did short film as well as poetry and prose um, in the individual contest. Which was your favorite? Um, I really liked poetry, actually. I did really fun stuff. I did The Cat in the Hat, so I kind of got to be a bit more like performance um, based on that. I also did uh, like a storytelling one time, and I did the, the, the Beetle and the Bard, the stories of Beetle and the Bard from Harry Potter, so that was pretty fun as well. Mm -hmm. I always chose fun things to do when I did them. That's enjoyable. Did you do any original material when you were in speech, or was it all? No, okay. I always chose some, usually like children's stories, because they're a bit more, they're just more fun. Yeah. <laughs> did you start uh, writing outside of speech? Not so much. I did a bit of uh, songwriting a bit in high school, and then I've gotten a lot more into screenwriting now. I take a lot of screenwriting classes at the moment. Uh, did you play any instruments when you uh, were doing songwriting? Um, not so much. I mostly just did lyrics, but I do play um, the guitar, piano, and ukulele. And then I played the clarinet in middle school. I don't know if it really counts. Yeah. I've probably forgotten. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we've all got that middle school instrument tucked away somewhere, yeah, collecting yeah. dust. Um, mm -hmm. I played the saxophone. Okay. So. Similar instrument. Yeah. Uh, so, coming to Iowa, what brought you uh, to the university? So, I knew that I wanted to study film, um, and then I had a couple other schools lined up. So, I applied to Columbia, USC, and NYU, and Columbia, and I didn't realize that Columbia and uh, USC, they're actually like among the like top 20 most expensive schools, so I ended up not going there, um, but I got accepted to NYU, and I did a college visit there, but uh, I wasn't just, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go move so far away quite yet, so I ended up going to Iowa, and I really like it here, so it was a good choice. Um, in terms of film, when did you get interested? Uh, were you just watching movies and suddenly realize, oh, I could do this, or when did that happen? I'm not entirely sure if there's like a big like aha moment. I knew that I wanted to go to college, and I knew that. Um, whatever I studied, I didn't want to be bored for the entire four years. So I thought that studying film was something that could keep me like engaged the whole time, and that by creating stuff, I could like bring like enjoyment to other people, which I thought was really cool. I know when I I also came to Iowa and studied film. Mm -hmm. When I came in, I had this mentality of I'm going to do everything. I'm going to be the writer. I'm going to be the director. I'll be the camera person. Mm -hmm. Did you have a similar idea coming in? Yeah, I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do. Um, I thought originally I wanted to do set design because I had done a bit of that in high school. But then I was into like, costuming and that's why I got into theater, the theater department. I thought I wanted to do that. And then right now I've gotten a lot more into screenwriting, but I also really like directing and producing. And then when I do like do my own projects, I tend to do a lot of it myself. But when I work with other people, it's a lot easier, and I think my projects turn out a lot better. So I realize that like working with other people is 
a lot of benefits to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel the same. You know, the intro film production class modes gets, yeah. you know, a lot of uh, bad feedback because it's so rudimentary, but I learned through that class, oh, I can't do all of this myself. Yeah, exactly. And I don't necessarily want to do it either. Mm -hmm. Uh, going back to uh, set dressing a little bit, uh, I don't know a whole lot about that. How does that particularly work for a play? Are you working with the director or is there a team of you? Uh... So in high school we had two directors. So we had the director that directed most of the like actors and stuff. And then we had another person that was working backstage and they organized all of that. So I worked with him a lot of the time when I was like doing work days and he organized what it was all going to look like and they looked at the script to see like what props we would need and how things were supposed to be laid out so that like movements would work. Um, so I worked a bit with that and tried to figure that out with him. And then I usually did a lot of painting, so that was my big contribution, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Have you done any set design here at the university? No. <laughs> they have a, it's a big time commitment here that I just haven't been able to like commit to. Um, but it would be really cool to get involved in. So maybe I'll do that my senior year. Yeah, you got some time to... Yeah, I got a bit of time. Yeah. Squeeze it in. <laughs> uh, so going back to writing now, uh, was your first experience writing a screenplay through a class? Had you d attempted it uh, before then? No, it was first time during class, yeah. I took short form, so we write like little films that are supposed to last like maybe like 10 to 15 minutes and then right now I'm writing a script that should be like 200 minutes long ish but I only have 15 pages right now Wow, so it'll get there is that on your free time then uh, just outside of class you're working on that yeah um, well I'm taking long form right now we our assignment is to write like 30 to 40 pages and then it's kind of up up to us if we want to continue that, but I think I will. I really like my project. Oh, good. Uh, can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, so it's about, it's kind of a boy meets girl type of thing. Um, I like to describe it as like 500 Days of Summer meets Francis Ha. So it's very like indie sure. type based. Um, that's kind of my favorite movies. But uh, yeah, it kind of switches perspectives. So he meets her at a wedding and then he's kind of, it's a lot of voiceover, so he's kind of directing the narrative at the, for the first like 10 minutes. Then it switches over to her, and it turns out that she's not really interested in him. Um, she is picturing him for her best friend, actually, um, but her best friend is really busy. Um, but the boy and the girl, are, their names are Alice and um, Peter, and they're going to like form this like friendship and stuff, and he thinks that it's going to turn into a relationship, but it turns out that he, she's going to have a boyfriend. She just like never mentions it. Okay. Well, yeah. some twists there, some conflict. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, it, be, as you mentioned, this is kind of a you said a boy meets girl mm -hmm. uh, story. How do you keep things fresh in in a you know the romantic comedy is kind of well trodden? Yeah. Are you coming up with new ideas? Are you like, well, they did that, I don't want to do that. What's your approach? Yeah. So. My like big idea here was to take the tropes of like all of the romantic comedies and kind of like put them on their head. So she's a lot more self-aware than a lot of the like girls in um, romantic comedies. Um, that's where like the Frances Ha element comes in, where she a lot during her a lot of this comes in during her like voiceovers, where she just kind of like mediates on all of the like tropes and like stereotypes that people have put her in like throughout her entire life. Um, and then she kind of just goes against that and kind of introduces all this depth to her character that no one really else sees. And that's the kind of the conflict between her and Peter as well because he kind of just sees her in this one light as this like dream girl, but she kind of has a lot more complexity than he, she, than he sees in her. I think that's an interesting take, and I'm, I'm sure as a woman you have a much more rounded uh, perspective from that side of things, yeah. um, as opposed to like n maybe the male gaze that you see in a lot of movies. Is that the genre you s would say you've worked with the most? Is uh, romantic comedy or maybe just comedy? Have you done others? Um, 
my other projects that I've done in long form, like my screenwriting, it's a lot, it's been a lot of a, like absurdist kind of, not so much comedy. There was one where this shadow gets separated from its human and then it kind of goes on like this journey throughout the day to like kind of find its human again. It kind of like tries to explore its independence but realizes that he kind of belongs with his person. And then another one was This Little Girl Gets Lost in Space. It was based on a Shel Silverstein poem because the assignment was to um, take like a written thing that like is already out there and adapt it into something for yourself. And so there's like a poem where like someone has to polish the stars. And so this little girl has to polish the stars, but she doesn't know why she's there. And this moon comes in and it's like a person though. And he's like, well, you have to polish the stars. So someone has to be here. And it turns out that it's kind of morbid. She, she had like died from cancer. <laughs> and then, um, so like when she kind of figured out her purpose, she's like allowed to move on. But it's not a sweep, but also kind of like sad. Sure. Yeah. yeah I feel like a lot of Shel Silverstein has that underlying um, realness to it. Yeah. Uh, What's something that you've learned in writing, uh, whether it's uh, from class or in your own work? Did you come into something thinking, oh, I can do this, but then you shift a little bit? I think what I've mostly learned through my writing is just to like give every single character the like thought and attention they kind of deserve, even if they're just like the best friend of the main character, that they should have an entire backstory because that's going to drive all of their like emotions and their actions and it's not going to make sense unless they have a purpose for doing their what they're doing. That's one thing I've learned is that you have to kind of start with character mm -hmm. even if you have an idea. Would you say you start with plot or character or a situation? I think I start with the like idea, like the big idea, what I want to get across and then I go into the characters right away and develop them. You have to know what they're going to do, what they would say. Yeah, exactly. And how they relate to one another. Mm -hmm. Have you done any other sort of writing uh, besides screenwriting? Have you done prose? I know you mentioned poetry. Yeah. Um, not so much. Mostly just for class. Sure. <laughs> Pretty busy. In terms of writing or uh, filmmaking, who do you look up to? What kind of movies do you like to watch? I like to, right now, Greta Gerwig is like my favorite person. Right yeah. I saw Lady Bird and it was like fantastic. Um, but I think I just like any movies that really pay attention to their characters and like give them the depth that they deserve, as well as I like a lot of stories that have like women in prominent roles as well. Have you watched any movies where you were dragged along to it or happened upon it and you were like, oh, wow, that's actually really good? You didn't expect to like it, but you end up liking it? Um, I think, so I'm not, I don't know. I just saw La N, La N? I don't know, it's a French film. It's, it was really, really good. It, but it has to do with like the French suburbs and it had to do with like a lot of violence and like racism and I wasn't sure whether I was going to like it just because it was really heavy material and not typically something I go for but it was fantastic and it was really well directed. Um, it was directed by the, have you ever seen Amelie? I have not but I'm aware of it, yes. So the male like main character in that one, he directed this. And it's a totally different like yeah. tone, but it's fantastic. It's such a good movie. Is there a certain subject or setting, I guess, theme that you'd like to tackle in uh, one of your screenplays? Um, right now I have a lot of like lighter material, so I'd really like to like challenge myself and get into something a bit more, you know, just like harder. Um, I don't really like like horror films at mm -hmm. all. So I don't know if I'd ever write that, but um, I heard that new movie with uh, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. I think I'd be interested in writing something like that. Or sci-fi. Yeah. I, I have a really good idea for a sci-fi. Well, movie. let's hear it. Um, so you know how a lot of films, like when there's like a big disaster um, that in like the world that they have like move all the smartest and brightest people like out into space or whatever on a spaceship? 
but they never really like concentrate on the people that are left behind. I thought it'd be really interesting to like have a movie about those people, the like 75 or like 80 percent of people that are left on Earth, um, and see like how they survive without all these like smartest and brightest people making all of these like giant corporations and like new like they took all the architects away. Like how do we build houses now? Type of thing. That's interesting because it's like you don't necessarily have this apocalyptic world yet. You have this world that may go that direction just because we've taken the top 15 and put them over here. Yeah, be an interesting idea. Yeah. Obviously, uh, nowadays, there's this shift and focus to include more female directors, mm -hmm. female writers. Uh, what have you seen either within the department, or I know you're involved with SVP, has that been a focus? I think that, I think that, like, we just uh, got our newest group of, like, leadership members, and I see that there's a lot more women on the leadership board now. Um, but I've also noticed in my classes that there's a lot of um, guys still in those classes, and I still think that the cinema world industry still needs a lot more female representation. I think we've made like giant strides in like medicine and all these other fields, but cinema still has a lot of men. But like that also might just have to do with like the type of people that are like, oh, I'm really interested in making movies. Sure. Type of way. So I think you have to be like conscious of that as well. It might just be an interest thing as well. But we shouldn't close doors to anyone just because of their gender. Absolutely. Um, what is something that uh, maybe male directors, male writers might be able to do to help uh, bring more women into their projects or help boost theirs? Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I think especially for writers, they should be, like talk to some women before they like just write them because th I think there's a lot of ideas of how like women talk to each other, um, which is something I like I'm addressing in my newest script as well. But like most are, because there's the um, I forget what it's called, but there's this I think it's be the Bechtel test. Sure. Yeah, where like. If two women, they have to be named, and they don't have a conversation about a guy. So, like, most of our, like, my roommate and I, most of our conversations are about, like, dance marathon, or, like, does this shirt look good with these shoes? Should I change? Like, does this, like, I don't know. Or, like, do you want to do the dishes tonight? Because, like, I've been doing them for a whole week. It's just a lot more, like, basic than a lot of like movies kind of yeah. make our conversation. Movies tend to think women talk about men a lot mostly. Yeah. Yeah, I was I just started watching Sex in the City and that's the entire <laughs> conversation. And all of the conversations have to do with like Carrie's relationships yeah. as well and I'm just like this is exhausting. It's not a show. Like, I like all the characters, but I'm like, ugh. It's so much drama. So are you watching it as sort of an antithesis? I'm going to not do this with mine. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Um, but it's still funny. And I think it's really interesting to watch, especially since the character that played Miranda is now running for governor in New York. So that's an interesting twist on it yeah. as well. Yeah. So you mentioned... Uh, more women being involved with film. I would say there's also a tendency for men to be crew members and you know the, yeah. a lot of women aren't really holding the boom, they're not operating cameras. Yeah. I don't know. I've had a guy like come up to be like, Oh, are your arms getting sore from like holding the boom? I'm like, No, I'm fine. Yeah. So I think there's just like that idea that we can't lift all these things and you know, maybe I'll like take a break from like holding this giant camera after two hours, but I think that we can do a lot and we can do just as much as everyone else. We're just people. <laughs> exactly. That's really what we're trying to get across here. Yeah, everyone's just basically the same. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to specifically bring you on the show because you actually were a crew member on a project that I had written and produced, uh, yeah. Dead Air. We have the director, Matt Tribble, here joining me. Hey, guys. So what was your experience like? I came to the SVP meeting to recruit crew members. Uh, 
What, and then uh, we kind of had some meetings before we started shooting. What were your initial thoughts uh, for Dead Air? Would you think of me uh, presenting it and all Yeah, that? it sounded like a really good idea and a really good opportunity like, for students to get involved, have some like actual experience like working on a film. So that go ahead and take it. Yeah. yeah. I remember when we were like first planning all this. I, I was originally going to go, but then I got called into work or something. It was one of those. It was just you, and then uh, I think we were just both sort of like tr like trepidatious of it, just like eh, we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like you just like crushed it out of the ballpark because like <laughs> people actually showed up to our movie. So yeah. yeah. yeah that's good. <laughs> uh, you had signed on as a production assistant. Mm -hmm. Predominantly, have you done just kind of general PA work before then? Did you run cameras specifically? Um, prior to that, I'd just done a lot of projects, mostly by myself, and then through SVP. I'd done mostly directing, actually. Um, but right now, like since then, I've worked on a lot of like people's projects, and I've done a lot of sound, particularly. Um, but I do like filming a lot, actually. Cinematography. Sure. What's your favorite aspect of the filmmaking process? Like pre-production, production, post? What, what uh, do you generally like? I really like pre-production, mm -hmm. actually. It's kind of cool when you, um, like, production, like, getting everything together. Yeah. Um, and then post-production can be a little arduous just, like, through the entire editing process and just, like, watching the, like, same footage over and over again. But, yeah, I guess I like pre-production the most. Cool. Yeah. With Dead Air, we started, you know, getting into filming. You know, we were in KRUI. There was a bunch of us in this, <laughs> you know, crowded... Uh, <laughs> radio space. So yeah. What were your initial thoughts when we started filming? Uh, I guess I'd, like, I'd never been in that room before, so it was really interesting just to see how you guys were kind of organizing and using this space to, like, to your best of your abilities to make your script come to life, I guess. So that was just cool. Yeah. And I noticed that, uh, you know, there was a lot of people on crew that didn't necessarily know each other. Some did, some didn't. Uh, some Friendships were forming. I, I think everyone kind of got along pretty yeah. well. Of all the sets I've been on, this one, like, we had no, like, issues with anybody. Like, usually there's, like, one or two people that don't seem to jive well. You try to keep them apart or whatever. But everybody seemed to get along pretty fine on ours, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's something that you would say you learned from working on Dead Air? I think there's just like an aspect of like you guys being there and like you're a lot more like professional than <laughs> some of like the student projects I've been on. That's um, that's really saying something because I'm <laughs> I'm not professional at all. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it was good to like, get that experience. Yeah, so that's good. Did you have a favorite day of shooting or set scene? I liked shooting at KURI. K -R -U -I. K -R -U -I. Um <laughs> It was like it was close, but also like th just the area was really cool, and it was really cool to see through the lens because there's just a lot of you could kind of play off of like the different like stuff in the room, and I think that came across really well like on screen. I was actually going to ask you, so like you were at KGN, right? If I'm not mistaken, for the for the co conference room scene and all that. Yeah. From a crew perspective, because I mean, I, I basically just kind of worked with the actors the whole time. Mm -hmm. I felt at times like I was sometimes isolating the crew. I, like, not I didn't want to. It was just just kind of something that happened. I was gonna say, what was your perspective on like that day of filming? Was it just like so weird because you're like in a city and in a building like you don't know anything about? Or I thought it worked out perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I didn't traumatize you. I guess. It just seems like any other like regular day. Nice. Do you have a onset story that you remember, or something that happened that um, to you specifically? Uh, I do remember like someone had to get behind like a desk in like a corner, and it was just like the most awkward position. But I thought that was really fun. poor. Poor Patrick. I kept making that poor guy like hide under desks. Yeah. Kept making Connor. You know, move cameras all the time that instead of locking them down. So the wall right now and I'm, to our I'm I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mark. I know this isn't the usual format for your show, but I told you. <laughs>
So it sounds like it was a overall good experience working on Dead Air. I know that we would certainly like to work with you again. You're very easy. Yeah. Company. You helped with auditions. You, you yeah. Out to Marion. You yeah. You went above and beyond. So Thank thanks a million. Yes. It was really fun. What are you planning on working on next? Um, I have so I'm gonna take editing in a year, um, but I don't have any like big plans. I'm in a through SVP we have like CDP so it's concept development and production, um, and I have a couple of ideas for that, but don't know if they're gonna come to life. So I'll like keep them in my pocket for now. Yeah. That's fair. Do you have any advice for students or other aspiring filmmakers? Yeah, I think just like take as many opportunities as you find and just like really take advantage of the resources that especially like the university has and like people you meet through the university. I have friends that are like extras on like actual film sets now and just like getting to know those people and getting to know more people from there. Um, we have the director or someone from like Infinity War coming. I don't know if he's the director. Or, like, the yeah, director. one of the Russo brothers yeah, is, is coming. Yep. Yeah, he's coming on Monday. And just like going to those types of things, or the writers from A Quiet Place were here a couple weeks ago, and I got to meet them. So just like going to those things and meeting these people and making those connections, I think is just really it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Great. Do you have any advice for us on the things that we can improve yeah. on sets moving forward or anything? No, I think just making sure that like your like your shots are really purposeful. Mm -hmm. I think it's just like a really good thing to do. But you, I liked your environment on set a mm -hmm. lot. You guys had a good balance between like, all right, we're working, and then like taking like a little breaks to like make a joke or something. Sure. So I thought that was nice. I think Rob helped a lot with that. Yeah. I think South Park was referenced at every shoot that we did, and it was always brought up. You, you know, up. that just reminded me. One of the things that I really loved about uh, working with everybody is like, it's the first day of shooting. Nobody really knows each other. Everybody's trying to kind of figure things out. You don't know how we're going to behave. You don't know like how the actors are. Don't know how the crew is, all that kind of stuff. And so it, there's always like that little bit of awkwardness, just kind of like getting to know everybody. And then during one of the, our, our lunch break, we stopped and like everybody's just like showing videos on their phone to each other and like just talking and that was like kind of the bonding moment for the crew. And that was one of those really cool uh, moments I just just remember right now. So yeah. it was really funny when we like first had that like lunch like yeah. dinner things. We were all sitting at like separate tables. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No one. It was really awkward. It, it was very much Breakfast Club where it's like I'm here but I'm not with anybody. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I think by the end we were all sitting at a like you know one or two tables. Together, so. It was cute. <laughs> it was cute. <laughs> All right, well, I want to thank you, Riley, for being on the show, yeah. and I wish you the best with all of your writing and filmmaking. I hope you forge ahead and stick with it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Matt, for no, coming on. No problem. And hosting yeah. and, uh, Hopefully I didn't destroy the format by breaking the fourth um, wall all the times. So Can I look at all the cameras or just, just that one? All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank you for watching this episode of Script to Screen. We'll be seeing you next time.